Hi, I'm Stephanie Razzo. Welcome to Nature Sketch Crate's Red Bearded Bee Eater instructional video. In this video, I'll be showing you how to paint the Red Bearded Bee Eater by using Nature Sketch Crate's step-by-step -step instructions. Help this tiny business by liking this video and subscribing to this YouTube channel. First, collect all the materials you need and make sure they're ready to go. Remember, this is just a sketch. Take your time and relax, and don't worry too much if you think you may have made a mistake. Let's get started. Step one, transfer the image to the watercolor paper. So I'm going to tape part of the transfer image to the back of the watercolor paper. And it doesn't really matter where you put it, I like to put it at the top. And then take your graphite transfer paper, and you want that dark side down, it's the dark side, you see I've used it many, many times. And then light side up, and you can reuse this graphite transfer paper over and over and over and over. And then just press down gently, and then you can start transferring some of these lines. So you can choose anywhere you like. I'm gonna just start here at the beak and just kind of see where those lines are transferring and how they're transferring. It looks pretty good. It looks like it's transferring dark enough. You want to be able to see it at the end so you can redraw those lines after you apply the watercolor. And these don't need to be exact. See my line is not super straight. That's just fine. And if you miss any, that's okay. You can always go back and add things later. And this is meant to be relaxing. Just kind of zone out and transfer these lines by tracing over them. You can put on some music, audiobook, a podcast, whatever you like, just kind of relax or maybe you're doing this outside and you're listening to nature whatever works best for you so just go ahead and go throughout and trace over all those lines to transfer them If you'd like to transfer the common name, I like to trace it on the inside since my pencil point is a little smaller than the text itself. When you have all the lines transferred, you can just kind of take um, both the graphite transfer paper and the image and flip it up and down like a flip book. And you can see right here I have some lines that weren't quite right and that's totally fine. I can fix that later. And you can take this out if it's getting in the way. And just kind of see if you got all of the lines. Just take your eye, go from one side to the other and from top to bottom as you flip it up and down to see if you missed any. And if you still miss some after doing this, that's fine too. You can always add them later, like I said in the beginning. Oh, I missed a whole bunch right in the throat area. So I'm gonna go ahead and place that back down there. and then draw those in. I always end up missing a few, and that's totally fine. And looks pretty good. I might just correct this. I'll move it to the side, get a straighter line on that. It's a bit easier to follow. And none of these lines are perfect. That's totally fine. I'll go ahead and be perfectly imperfect. And every time I do this, it turns out just a little bit different, which I think is fun. Every image is unique. 
And you'll find this will be unique to your mood. How you were feeling that particular day you were painting. And then when you're done, go ahead and remove the image from the back of the watercolor paper and the tape off of the transfer image. And you can save this for future use or get rid of it. This has already been used a few times, so I'm going to compost that. Then you can take your kneaded eraser, make sure you knead it into a light gray spot, not a dark spot. If it's a dark spot, it might leave smudgy marks. So go ahead and erase. And you can lighten some of the lines too by just kind of dabbing over them. And when you have all the lines transferred, you can go ahead and move on to step two. Step two, paint in the Bee Eater Blue. First, mix the Bee Eater Blue. So take two drops of the 1H Hansa Yellow Light, and you want to make sure this is well mixed by shaking it. Sometimes the paint pigment does separate and settles at the bottom. So one, two, and one drop of the 22H Paints Gray. And release a little bit of water by pressing on the barrel of the water brush to mix it up. Or take your regular paintbrush and add a little bit of water from whatever you're using to keep the water and add it in there just a little and then dab it off onto your towel and test it out on your paper looks like the right color to me I'm gonna want the wetter lighter version of this color so go ahead and just dab it off on your towel and then release quite a bit of water or add a bunch of water on your palette making it a wetter, lighter, or less concentrated color. Dab it off onto your towel and test it out. Looks great. Dab, pick up a little bit more, dab it on your towel, and then apply it to your painting. And we're going to apply it just up here on this part of the crown. And then also around the eye. This doesn't need to be exact, you're just doing an approximate. So if you get it a little bit thicker, a little thinner, that's totally fine. And then it's just right under this area. And then right around the beak. And then go ahead and clean off your brush, let it dry, and move on to step three. Step three, paint in Bee Eater Black and Green. So first mix the Bee Eater Black, which will be the 11H Carbon Black. Shake it up. Add two drops to your palette. And then with a clean brush, add a little bit of water. And we're going to use the wettest, lightest, or least concentrated version of this color. So go ahead and dab it on your towel and then release some water right next to it. And that's still going to be really dark. So go ahead and dab it off again and release some more water. Now I think we're getting a lighter version of this color now. Dab it on your towel and test it out looks pretty good and I'm going to add that to the beak branch and the feet as you see in your final reference image and your step 3 image and what you want to do is just go ahead and go over the area like you would 
maybe a little dark, dab it off my towel. Uh, go over the area like you would with a crayon or marker, just kind of filling it in. And if you run out of paint, then you pick up just a little bit more on your palette. So if it starts running low on color, so I'm going to add this to the feet and the branch. So I'm going to treat the feet as part of that space. If you end up having lines left over, it's just going to add more character to your painting so there's a little separation there, that's fine. Just add that in. And then I'm going to use this drier, darker color and test it out on my paper. It looks pretty good to me. And I'm going to add it to probably the tail first while I make sure these dry. These actually feel dry. You can just kind of pat your finger over it to see. And I'm just going to add it here to the tail again. Like a marker or a crayon, I'm just going to fill in the space. You can either outline it and then fill it in, or you can just kind of move from one side to the other. I'm going to pick up a little bit more of that. I'm going to roll my the tip of my brush on my towel, and then I'm going to add it to the beak. This creates a finer tip so I can get a little bit more of an exact line. And again, this doesn't have to be the same as the reference image. It's just an approximate. This is just a sketch. Those lines uh, that you transferred are there to help guide you. Pick up a little bit more, dab it off on my towel, create a little tip by rolling it, and then I'm going to add it to the nails as well. And off my brush, and then I'm going to mix the Bee Eater Green. So I want 30 drops of the 1H Hansa Yellow Light. One drop of the 22H Payne's Gray. And I'm going to go ahead and mix that up, making sure to try to keep it away from my other colors in my palette. I'm going to spread it along the edge here since it's so much paint from all the yellow. Dap it off on my towel and test it out. It looks like the right color. I'm going to use the wetter, lighter version of this, so I add a little bit of water here to the side. Sometimes it might take you a few tries to get the right consistency of the right amount of water to pigment balance, and you'll be wanting to add that in your palette there. Um, and that's what this test strip is for, for you to test that out. So then we're going to add this to the bird just like you see in step three's image and the final reference image and I like to start from the top and move down to the bottom and I do the upper left just because I'm right-handed and I don't want to smudge it and again just like before I'm going to add this like I would with a marker or a pen just filling in the space When you've added all that bee eater green, go ahead and clean off your brush and move on to step four. Step four, painting the bee eater red, yellow, and orange. So first you want to mix the bee eater red. So we'll take the 27H vermilion hue, shake it up a little bit like before, Add a couple of drops to our palette. One, two. Just adding two because it's easier to work with a little bit more paint. But you can 
probably do it with just one too. Whatever works best for you. So pick up a little bit of paint and we're going to use this at the full concentration. I did add a little bit of water here and that helps it move better on the paper. Dab it off on the towel, test it out. Looks good. Pick up a little bit more and then I'm just going to add it to this section between those blue areas here. And that includes the forehead and part of the throat area. And I'm just adding it the same way I did before. Just covering that entire area. Go ahead and clean off your brush. So next we're going to add the Bee Eater Yellow. And so I'm gonna have the 1H Hansa Yellow Light, shake it up. Add a couple drops I have something to work with. I ended up adding three, it's not gonna make a difference because we're not mixing any colors to it. Just stick to any kind of formula. I add a little bit of water. And this brush does release some water just when um, using it in general. So don't squeeze on it too much. You don't wanna reduce the concentration of that color. Looks good. The reason you want a little bit of water is to help it move better on that paper. Dab it off onto your towel. And then I'm gonna add this to the tail area, like you see in your final reference image and your step four image. I'm gonna clean off my brush. And then I'm going to mix the Bee Eater Orange, which is the 26H Chrome Yellow. Again, it's the full concentration. We're not actually mixing anything with it. So I'm just gonna put a couple drops. Like before, I'm gonna add just a tiny bit of water by gently squeezing the barrel just a little bit, just to get it so it works well on the paper. Dab it off on my towel and test it to make sure it's full concentration. And then I'm gonna add this to the eye. So I'm gonna roll it to create a fine little tip. And then I'm going to really work hard to avoid the white part um, that's part of the black. So the upper half of the black area is a little white strip. So I'm gonna paint right around that. If I make the eye a little bit bigger, that's fine. But if I paint over that white area, it'll take some of that realism out of this picture. It's a good idea to try to preserve some of those realistic characteristics like that little shine of light in the eye. Then I'm gonna add this here to the chest area like we see in step four and the final reference image. And you might have an easier time referring to your final reference image. When adding this, you can use kind of a line motion where you need it. And uh, it doesn't have to be exact, but you wanna preserve a little bit of that green underneath or you can just paint the whole thing if you prefer, I guess. This is your painting, you can make it your own. And I'm just gonna add that in. And then I'm gonna clean off my brush. Oh, there's a little bit more there. Clean off my brush, let this dry, and move on to step five. Step five, paint in bee eater green and purple. So you want to paint in the driest, darkest bee eater green, which we mixed earlier. I'm gonna pick that up, test it out on my paper, it looks good. Pick up a little more, dab it on my towel. And then I'm going to add that, just like you see in step five's image. So I'll use a I'll fill things in and I'll also use a line motion to kind of go over some of these spaces. And don't worry too much about being exact like before, just get in the same general area, you'll be good. And when you've added all of the green, go ahead and clean off your brush. 
And as you see, I did not, I added a little bit more here than in the final reference image. And that's totally fine. Each one is gonna be a little different every time I paint. I'm gonna clean off my brush and then I'm going to mix the Bee Eater Purple. So I'll take two drops of the Vermilion Hue 27H. One, two, and one drop of the 22H Payne's Gray. And with my clean brush, I'm gonna add just a little bit of water, mix that up. And then I'm going to dab it off on my towel and then test it out so that it looks like the right color. And then I want to use a little less concentrated version of this color, so I'm going to take it to the side and add some water until I think I have that wet light color. Dab it on my towel and then test it out. And I might want a little lighter, so I'm going to just move just some to the side here. Dab it on my towel and test it out again. That looks good to me. And I'm gonna just add it in this area, like you see in step five's image in your final reference image. So in between the blue and the red. I'm gonna clean off my brush. I'm gonna let this dry and move on to step six. Step six, paint in be either green and black. So first I'm gonna add the green again. And when you take the same concentration of color, it's just gonna be darker when you put it over. Um, so you're adding a, another layer of that color over the first layer. And so I'm just going to refer to my final reference image and my image six for where to place that. And again, like before, it doesn't need to be exact. Pick up more paint whenever you need it. And as you can see, even though it's the same color we're painting, it comes up darker when you add more on top of it, once it's dry. So next I'm going to paint in the driest, darkest, and wettest, lightest bee eater black. But I am noticing that I forgot to put in the um, darker areas in the branch. And it's okay to go back and add in anything you forgot to add. So I'm gonna pick up a little of that medium colored black, test it out on my test strip, and then just add it into the branch. And this doesn't need to be exact. This is a real approximate. It's a little dark, so I'm gonna dab it on my towel and then maybe wipe over a little bit with my brush and then add some more. And this wet area, you can add just a little bit more and make it just a little bit darker. And the branch, it's kind of good to give it some variation anyway. So it doesn't need to be perfect. So that paint, once you put the paint, wet paint into the wet area, it'll just kind of flow through into the area that's already wet, but it won't go to these dry areas. Then I'm gonna clean off my brush a little bit, and I'm gonna add a little bit of water to this driest, darkest, just test it out, see if it's still a good concentration. It looks really dark to me. And roll it out on my, on my towel, and then I'm gonna add it to the tail, beak, and nails like you see in your final reference image. So I'm gonna take it and just kind of outline the beak a little bit. And I'm trying to stay on the inside when I'm lining it rather than the outside. And add it right here. And if you feel more comfortable doing this with your pen, you can, but I think the color looks better if you add it with your paint. Pick up a little bit more, dab it off on your towel and roll it to get a nice fine tip and add it to the 
nails. And I like to start from the top going down to the bottom to kind of create a little tip at the end. So I'm pressing harder and then coming up a little lighter, harder and then a little lighter to create that tip. And pick, actually, I'm gonna pick up some more and add it to the tail. And this is just kind of a straight line here on the right and then the inside of each of these tips of the tail feathers. So I'm just putting my brush in the center of those and then working out a little bit by pressing down on my brush, making it kind of a wider tip. And pick up more paint whenever you need it, dab it on your towel. And if you don't preserve the edges on all of those, that's fine. Remember, this is just a sketch. And it's gonna turn out perfectly and perfect. It's just a fun practice. It's a way to relax and enjoy yourself. And then clean off your brush. And you're gonna take the wettest, lightest color, dab it on your towel, and you wanna test it again to make sure it's the right concentration. It's a little bit dark because it's been sitting here, it's dried out a little, so I'm gonna add a little bit more water. Test it out again, that looks better. Dab it on my towel, make sure it's not too wet. I don't wanna add a bunch of water to my paper. And then I'm just gonna add it to create a little bit more dimension to this tail, so it's adding a little bit of a shadow. So I'm just adding it along some of these lines. Not too much, just a little bit. And then that makes it pop up a little bit, look a little bit more realistic, even though it's just a few layers of color. And a few layers of paint. I'm gonna clean off my brush. I'm gonna let this dry and I'm going to move on to step seven. Step seven, add ink lines. So I'll use the smallest micron, the 005, and it has the smallest tip of the three that I recommend for this lesson. And I'm just gonna redraw all of the lines that I transferred in the beginning on step one. And you can refer to your final reference image for that or the transfer image and also 7A. In addition, I'm going to add some lines just here to the branch, like you see in your final reference image in 7A. So go ahead and go throughout and redraw those lines. And you can redefine areas. So the tip of the speak looks a little weird, so I'm redefining it a little bit. It's a little bit too pointed. It's a little more round on the bottom, and I had it kind of pointed from painting, and then a little bit more rounded, and then pointed at the top. So you can use this to redefine different areas if needed. If the paint landed somewhere else, you can redefine those areas, the edges of where the paint should be or shouldn't be as well. I'm just adding scribble lines. They don't need to be the same. Just kind of adding them in the same direction. Next, I'm gonna use the O1 Black Micron to write the scientific name, to thicken the line under the eye, some feather lines, the outline of the toes, to fill in the center of the eye, if you haven't already done it, with the smaller micron, and outline the wings, just like you see in the final reference image and 7A. And the OM micron is kind of the medium tipped micron. 
Also thicken any lines that you think might need to be thickened. This is your sketch. Lastly, I'm going to use the 08 Black Micron and I'm going to fill in the common name and thicken some of the lines throughout uh, as seen in the final reference image and 7B and this includes the outlining of the toes in some areas, uh, upper and lower branch lines and parts of the wings and the outline of the tail and anywhere else that you think it might need it. Be careful as this pen does tend to smudge. It's important to make sure you have line variation when you're deciding where to put your ink. So you don't want to outline everything, you just want to outline and reline some things. So there's some thin lines and some thick lines. It really creates contrast and helps your image pop from the page. I like how this looks, so now I'm done. We're done, great job. You have created a painting that only you could do. Next, you have some options of what you could do with this painting. You can punch holes in it, add it to your sketchbook, frame it, gift it, send it in the mail to a friend or relative. Don't forget to share this art on the Facebook fan art page. We'd love to see it. And use the hashtag NatureCreateArt when you share it on social media so that we can feature it on the Nature Sketch Create social media pages. Make sure you check out the Nature Sketch Create website for future lesson crates and sign up for a newsletter for regular updates.